Welcome to our HQ Live. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm Kelly Ashton, Hattie Quilter Studio Educator, and with me today is our special guest, Vicki Kirkfleet. She's one of our national educators, and she's from Kansas. Overland Park. Overland from Kansas. Mm -hmm. Vicki, tell me a little bit about how you got introduced into quilting, about your quilting world, or your journey. What brought you here? Well, when I was younger, my grandmother was a quilter. And she would spend the summers, she didn't have a TV at that time, it wasn't until the mid-60s that she got her first TV, so she would spend her days piecing quilts. And then in the wintertime, she drug out this huge quilting frame yeah. and would set it up in her like living room and would sit there and hand quilt her quilts all the time. I was so fascinated by that. Of course, all of us cousins played underneath it because it made a great fort. I had plenty of days under a quilt myself. Exactly, yeah. and I was always fascinated by it. And when I was growing up, I used to often say to my grandmother, would you teach me how to quilt? And she said, no. Oh, she and did. I said, why? <laughs> and she said, someday you will go to college and you will have a career and you will not need to make quilts. You can buy whatever it is you want. Oh my goodness. And so she wouldn't teach me. But that bug was still there. I We're wanted creators, to learn. Right? I know. We just want to create. Exactly. And so finally, when I, in the mid 90s, I took some quilting classes from our local quilt shop. And I would, since I was a teacher, I would teach school year. And then I'd be off for two months. They say three, but you're only off for two. And in June and July, I would do some piecing. And then I'd fold my quilts up and put them in the closet. And in the back of my mind, I thought, someday I'm going to quilt these myself. And I even bought a big round hoop, thinking I would hand quilt it. That lasted maybe about three weeks. Yeah. And I gave that up. So I thought, OK, I'll take it to my domestic machine. I looked at my quilt, looked at the throat space, and said, not going to work. So I never did quilt any of them. Did and you, I went You just a, stacked up your quilt tops just in your up closet. My quilt tops. Mm -hmm. And um, went to a couple of quilt shows in the local Kansas City area, Overland Park, and started admiring long arms yeah. and thinking someday when I retire from teaching that I was going to own a long arm. And in 2011, I made that, real, that dream a reality. And look where you are today. I know. <laughs> and I do thank Candy Quilter a lot for that. <laughs> so well, I have looked up to Vicki's free motion quilting for a long time. So I'm excited to have her here and to be able to show you some of her amazing quilts. So, so first off, we have a couple behind us. So let's talk about the ones behind us. Mm -hmm. So this is a quilt that we had you make for us for mm -hmm. the Moxie. When the we Moxie. introduced the Moxie, we had several of our educators make quilts. And this is the one that that Vicki chose to do. And she created the design, she pieced it, and then she took it to her machine and quilted it. I did. Mm -hmm. And tell us about the quilting that you did on this quilt. Okay, so on this quilting, it's a combination of free motion. Okay. And a lot of people need to remember that free motion is any quilting designs that you as a quilter, manually, hand-guided, put onto your machine, or okay. onto your quilt. So you're saying that if I'm using a ruler, it's still considered free motion? It's still considered free motion, free motion. Because I'm driving the machine, not, not a computer. A mm -hmm. okay. Not a computer. And so on this one, I have some straight lines. Anyone can do straight lines. You can use our channel locks, or you can use electromagnetic channel locks, or rulers. Right. So we so. wanted the quilting on the Moxie quilts to be really um, enticing, mm -hmm. but for everyone to know that this is the type of quilting that you can succeed with. Like mm -hmm. you can achieve this type of quilting as a beginning quilter. Mm -hmm. So even though Vicki wasn't a beginner when she quilted it, she chose designs that were enticing for mm -hmm. all levels of quilters. So and, and straight lines work really well for that. So it has a very modern appeal. Yeah, it for does. For a lot of modern quilters out there that are younger quilters that are starting to get and you did a lot of lines, but just by changing the direction, going mm -hmm. diagonally or um, vertically or horizontally, it just really helps those, the, um, what I'm trying to say, the texture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So, so these were almost like matchstick lines. I divided the space here with another straight line, and then I did matchstick designs going here, and then came in and did them in here as well. So fun. Mm -hmm. I love it. Love it. Yep. 
We have another quilt behind us of Vicky's. So we're going to turn the other direction and um, just give you a glimpse at that and the texture on that amazing quilt. And maybe when we send up to the machines, we'll have you tell them a little bit more about the mm -hmm. designs you chose on there. Mm -hmm. But it has so many amazing free motion designs on there. So it's beautiful. And the free motion designs that I put on there was so that way I could take one quilt to cover a lot of topics in classes. <laughs> sure, right. When we, we pack quilts around with us, we want to be able to yes. get a lot into one little punch. So exactly. Let's look on the table in front of us, so this mm -hmm. quilt right here. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about how do you develop your free motion skills? Because um, obviously when you first purchased your machine, were you able to achieve something like this? And let's talk about how you developed your skills okay. to become a better quilter. So as a teacher, um, when I would work with my students on any skill, one of the things I would often tell them is to practice, practice, practice. Any skill takes practice. And so a lot of people like to use whiteboards to draw on to develop that skill. Yeah. Believe me, muscle memory through drawing is so important with quilting. I chose not to use a whiteboard because I tend to find myself doodling all the time. When I would wait for my granddaughter as she would get out of school, I would sit and doodle. And so anyway, to instead of carrying around a whiteboard, I would carry around a sheet protector like this. And I love these because of the fact that I can roll them up and tuck them into a purse with the dry erase marker and a little piece of batting square. And I would just literally sit and draw and practice drawing. Now when I would draw, you will notice that there's two things that's not happening. My wrist is not on the table and neither is my elbow. My arm is straight up. Why do I do it that way? Because it most replicates going to the machine and moving it like this. Even if you have a stationary machine and you're moving the fabric underneath the needle, you're still using that movement yeah. that you created by drawing just like this. The other reason why I really like doing this is if I wanted to, I could, if I came across a really great design in a magazine, I could enlarge it and I could put it in here and just continually practice that skill until I felt comfortable with it and felt like going to the machine with it. Yeah. Even today, I don't try doing a new design without practicing first and drawing and building that muscle memory for yeah. it. Um, what I makes it also nice is if you're wanting to challenge yourself with feathers, take a design, stick it in here, find your stitch path, make right. notes on your piece of paper, so that way you know exactly the direction you want to go. Right. Even today for me, when I, when I free motion, um, I will draw it before I go to the machine and quilt it. And even though it's not the first time I've quilted, mm -hmm. it really helps to kind of cement the path into my brain so that when I go to the machine, it's just a lot more flowing. It's mm -hmm. just easier to move through that design. So mm -hmm. I love that idea. I love doodling. Doodling just comes in handy. I, I always say that it's kind of a shame we got rid of those telephones that were hooked to the wall with those cords. You know, we had a really long cord as a kid. <laughs> And so we could travel at least through a couple of rooms. But what did your phone book look like? Well, I used a lot of, of junk mail. And oh, did you? I, yeah, I used a lot of Our junk mail. Our phone book was covered <laughs> in doodles. So I said, it's too bad we don't have those phone books anymore. It's exactly. something to doodle on. But right. I, I take a, like a notebook with me mm -hmm. and doodle everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I think that you're hit on the key. It's practice. It's practice. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. what we want to be good at in life. If we put the effort in, we can be successful. So. And I can be honest and tell you that I have wasted many pieces of practice fabric just trying to learn some new skills. And that's okay because it's building upon that previous So then skill. it's not wasted. It's not. No. no you could at least um, find some good use for it, right? Even Well, the good use was that it, it helped your quilting it skills, did. Mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. those, mm -hmm. those pieces of fabric have some good use, whether they end up in our dog's bed or whether they end up, who knows where. Who knows where. We're happy mm -hmm. that they, they mm -hmm. helped improve our skills. Exactly. So. 
Let's talk about some of the, the techniques that you used on this quilt in front of us because okay. this is an eye stopper. I love <laughs> the designs you used here. And one of the first ones I'm going to go to is the one in the center in the colored blocks. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite designs. I love to teach that path in classes. So tell us a little bit about it. And um, it's just, it looks so technical. So tell us about it. It looks very technical, but it is extremely easy. This is commonly known as Rick's Paradox. It's a Zentangle design. Mm -hmm. And I used a straight edge ruler for it. And as you can see, it does curve. There's curves there. Yeah. And when I teach a ruler class, people are amazed when we use a straight edge ruler to create this design because they think, oh, I could never quilt something like this. And I say, hold that thought. And so we start out and we will like stitch a square and then we will pivot the ruler. And the reason why I love to teach this, and I know you used to do it too, the reason why I love to teach this is it really teaches people how to use that ruler all around that yeah. hopping foot and yeah. to look at those ruler lines there. Yeah, it's such a fun, texture design. It just mm -hmm. really adds some fun, unique. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then what is it you did along this border here? I mean, not border, but along this edge, you did a, a kind of tight little design. Exactly. In all of the background areas back in here, I just did a very micro stippling in this area so to really pop this out. It's kind of a meander. Exactly. That good old meander. Mm -hmm. I love it, but look the, the, what it does for this. Exactly. Quilting. This is double batted, so there is wool directly underneath this piece of fabric, and then the 80-20 that's against the backing. So when you lay down a lot of the thread in this area, it really puffs it up in the areas where there's not a lot of quilting that went on in there. Okay, so for example, like the circles with the echo, mm -hmm. because you've got dense stitching next to that circle, it really allows that circle design to pop. It does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, And I do want to draw your attention to the fact that, and we're going to talk about this a little bit, when we do not have a circle template for each and every one of these. Every size. Every size, exactly. We tried, we really tried I with know. the silver and gold templates. But. but that's where you can lay down your original circle right here uh -huh. and then put the echo foot on and echo around your original. So still using the template so you still get a perfect, because if you've never tried to quilt a perfectly mm -hmm. round circle, just free motion, it's really very it's difficult. really hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Physics come into play, all the wheels on the machine are moving, and it's mm -hmm. just really hard to get a perfect circle. So if you want a really nice circle, a template is a is a really good option. Exactly. And so and what sh Vicky was explaining is that we don't it's hard to have a template in every single size. So by putting on the echo foot, it gave her just the right size mm -hmm. of gap mm -hmm. so that she could leave that quilt on or that space mm -hmm. unquilted. Mm -hmm. Okay, you did a lot of lines. I did. Diagonal, vertical, mm -hmm. curved. Mm -hmm. There's some curved lines right in here, as you can see. This is just some free motion wiggle lines. Baby lines. Yes, just going horizontally and vertically. Um, lots of straight lines in uh -huh. here. Down here in this motif that you might be able to see right here, I created my circle. That's one of my favorite designs. And I then love it. using just a, a, a marking pen. Like a mark be gone pen. I just created radiating lines that I wanted to have going across here and then I stitched these flying geese yeah. designs in there and then I went back in as well and did some of the matchstick. So all that dense quilting, that matchstick quilting just made those little triangles mm -hmm. just pop. It's just so, pop right up. So mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love it. We could spend all day just looking at this, the concentric circles, mm -hmm. so many wonderful things. So. And do you have to do 50 different designs on something like this? No, as Looks a matter of fact, um, you can do just a couple. Like if you really liked this one and you really liked maybe this one, you wanted to put it up here, you could leave the rest blank yeah. and then just do like some kind of micro stippling or something in yeah, the background. It just, just a few different filler mm -hmm. designs can change, change the look when they're next to each other. It really gives you that texture. So. Awesome. I kind of overdosed on this one, but that's but okay. <laughs> we had to fit a lot in your suitcase, yes, exactly right? And right. I love it, and I would hang it on my wall any day. So let's put this one down right here. And look, let's look at the next one. Okay, this is beautiful. So you just put a 
piece of printed fabric in the center, mm -hmm, followed mm -hmm. by a solid fabric, and then the white fabric, mm -hmm. and just had some fun. What a playground for quilting. What a playground. So exactly tell me right. what your focus was, what you were trying to get the eye to focus on. I think we can all I see it. I really wanted my eye to focus on this piece okay. and then start to radiate out. So as you can see, this was one of those go to the quilt shop to get some white Kona cotton. Mm -hmm. And you walk in with your blinders on and you say, I'm only going to buy white Kona cotton today. Wait, can you do that? No. Oh, I walked okay. out with this as well because oh, okay. <laughs> I saw this and I thought, oh my gosh. And so I really liked this design here. Uh -huh. So what I did is I replicated this center design right here into this larger one right here and in the, this area right so here. So you put some faux flowers mm -hmm. in there that mm -hmm. really can draw your eye just because of the way you quilted it. So. Exactly right. And some, some ferns, ferns and some mm -hmm. feathers. Just drew a lot from this small design and radiated out. And again, this is a great opportunity for you to practice just some of those free motion designs. You don't need to bind it. You can make this into a pillow yeah. and have it in your house. What? And I love to be able to have a place to practice with some purpose. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So even if you didn't plan on putting this in Houston next year, it's absolutely beautiful <laughs> for your couch, your wall, any place you any want to display it, it, and it gave mm -hmm. you a perfect playground to play with. It did. I love it. Okay, I've got so much fun stuff to look at. <laughs> <laughs> so I recognize this pattern. Absolutely, it's yeah. a Marie Eldridge pattern. Marie Eldridge, we all love this pattern. Mm -hmm. So she designed the pattern and, and shared it with us as educators, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. um, but. Hers Your quilting didn't really follow the pattern. You've chose some designs mm -hmm. that are really um, unique from mm -hmm. the pattern. So exactly. this chevron that you've done here mm -hmm. isn't something that you would just look at the pattern and see. This is something that you just added to give some eye candy to the quilt. Exactly. Again, yeah, I wanted to do a lot of textures and fills and free motion, so that way I could use it for a lot of different classes. What I did, and if we could kind of bring it up just a smidgen here, that's a Midwestern term, smidgen. Anyway. I've heard it. Um, the pattern originally did have this design going across okay, it just like this. Chevron. So what I thought was I would take this design element and then replicate oh, it going you just all the way up. it mm -hmm. through the whole quilt. Now, Beautiful. the one thing I will say about it, though, is when I did decide to load this on my frames, uh -huh. I, frame, I loaded it this to the top. Okay. And the reason why I did that was because I was afraid if I started because of the drawing oh, of quilting. You wanted to match this, the diagonal lines. Mm -hmm. I see. So because yeah, quilts do tend to draw in. Yeah. So I loaded this at the top. So that way, as I was quilting, if it went off just yeah. a little bit, nobody's really going to notice because your eyes take in the whole right. picture. So you can quilt flowers upside down. Yes, you can. Just in case you wondered. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I love, that's a great idea. I would have not thought about starting it upside down, mm -hmm. but that gives you that perfect chevron to mm -hmm. follow through mm -hmm. your quilt. Exactly so. right. And then again, a lot of just free motion, little wiggle lines and straight lines mixed. Um, matchsticks, you can tell I kind of like those. Um, some pebbles and lines mixtures here. So there's just a lot of, a lot going on. I love it. <laughs> Well, I recognize this one just a little you bit. Bet. You should. Yes, I should. <laughs> because Vicki and I were teaching together in Montana uh -huh. when we first laid our eyes on the Dream Big panel. So this is a Dream Big panel by, by Hoffman of mm -hmm. California Fabrics. Mm -hmm. It was designed by Jeannie Harrell. Harrell. Oh, Jeannie, I'm sorry if I messed that up. <laughs> Jeannie Summerall Harrell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyway, we both saw this in the fabric store and mm -hmm. had to have one. Had mm -hmm. no idea what we were going to do with it. Nope. But as free motion quilters, we had some ideas, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And you did a beautiful job. I Thank love you. I love these panels and I don't mean to take over for you, but what a great place to practice your free motion skills. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. There's over sixty mm -hmm. petals on this, this <laughs> yes. quilt. And so by the mm -hmm. time you get the through all 60 of those petals, your free motion is really. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, one of the things I want to say or, or draw, mention about even quilting this, and you probably experienced this too. One of the things that I did is I laid this out in a 
kind of a sunny spot because I wanted to see how the light would catch it as just when it came time to even drawing designs on it. And so then I took some preview paper and I actually pieced two pieces of preview uh -huh. paper together and laid it out over the top. So as I was trying to come up with some ideas on how to quilt it, I would walk by it and then I would start to draw a feather here uh -huh. or a feather here. And if I looked at it and I thought, mm, I don't like that feather, I'd take my, my little batting <laughs> square and erase that About one preview and paper, put right? another one. So then when it came time to actually quilt it, I could lift that, pa that preview paper up uh -huh. and set it right by my machine and load this onto my frame and I could kind of just mix and match the way I wanted to yeah, do it. So. That's pretty much how I did mm -hmm. it too. So yeah. it was fun to hang it up in my studio and it's, now it's fun to hang it up quilted, right? <laughs> it is. I hang it up quilted in my, in my room as well. So it is the one that I, and it was kind of strange because I had to take it off the wall and it was like, I walked into the room and thought, oh, yeah, you I have know a bare space. This week. <laughs> I know where it's at. <laughs> Let's talk about thread choice a little bit. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This so, is a good, good one to start with because you used several different threads mm -hmm. in this panel. Exactly. And so what I did is I started in the middle and I matched it up. I like to do a lot of complementary threads. Okay. Very rare, rarely will I do contrasting threads, but I like to do a lot of complementary threads. So this is where I started with the blue in here and I started to work outward with the blue and then I transitioned over into the purple because I wanted to match the thread with the, with the fabric. Okay. So. Um, this, I believe, was done in 50 weight at that time. If I had it to do again, I'd go with, with uh, micro quilter. Yeah, <laughs> I used a lot of micro quilter on mine too. Yes. But then I got brave and started using more of the 40 weight threads, mm -hmm. and, and I loved that too. So there's not a right or a wrong answer. No, have there's Have some not. fun, be brave with your thread choices. And exactly. Yeah. And the way in which you can always try to make sure that it's the right thread for it is to just pool some thread on it yeah and and stand back and take a look at let's it let's see think, what that lime green will look like oh my goodness <laughs> so if I were to take this and pool it on here it would really be a highly contrasting thread on there what weight is this thread uh, it's so oh, it's a 12 12 weight, weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be really contrasting and thick and thick <laughs> yeah. so yeah. Um, but this is beautiful when it's yeah, used it on is. wool especially if you increase the stitch length it's, it's fun to stitch so. with, but, but you would need a bigger needle for mm -hmm. that thread, so. This is another thread. This is a 50 weight. This is what I used on this one. And okay. so, again, you can pool it on there and decide. The thicker your thread, the more the, you're going to see the quilting. The yeah. finer the thread, you're not. The one thing I do like to mention when I, when I work with students in classes is I love variegated threads, and I have a lot of people that like to use or have variegated threads on their quilt top. And I often mention to them to make sure that if they want me to use variegated threads, to think about one thing. Am I going to be backtracking over a lot? So see on this spine here, on these feathers, Where you have a lot if of I used a lot of backtracking, it would be laying one color on top of another color on top of another color. So that's why I would discourage using a variegated thread on something like this. Yeah. But when you have a quilt top that is just flowing across and you're just doing free motion without backtracking, then this is, these are fabulous. So fun, oh yes, it? so fun. Yeah. So fun to use. Very good. Okay, well I want to talk about um, some of the tools that you choose to use when you're doing free motion. And I think mm -hmm. maybe that would be best done at the machine. So Absolutely. let's move on over to the machine. Okay, okay. sounds good. Okay, so Vicki, we want to talk a little bit about the tools that mm -hmm. help you be successful at long arm quilting or your machine. And we're looking at the screen on the back of the machine. Can you tell us maybe about the, the machine settings, where you set the machine when you're free motion quilting to give quilters an idea? Well, a lot of my settings will depend upon what I'm going to be doing. So for example, if I'm free motion, doing free motion using rulers, I'm more likely to use the stitch regulation in the precision. And I always like to remind my students when it comes time to remembering which is which, mm -hmm. precision begins with a P, the machine will pause when you are stitching. So if you slow down or stop, 
the machine pauses just like your motions do. And okay. so with a lot of beginner quilters, that's the speed and the function that they like to have the machine set at. And so then I will use precision mostly when I am doing ruler work. Otherwise, I switch it over and I go to the cruise mode. Now, I like to tell my students also, that cruise symbol makes you think of recycling. And what's in the word recycling? Cycle. Cycle. Yeah. And that means that your machine is going to cycle constantly. Even if you pause, it's not going to stop. It's going to continue cycling. Now, I like to use the cruise mode most generally all the time okay. when I'm doing free motion. But also, as you have, see right here, we have it set up to do a pantograph here on the back. Pantograph is free motion because you're guiding that machine yeah. over this pantograph to create the design on the front. Can, and so, can I stop you for a second? Absolutely. Tell me what like speed you like at cruise because cruise is stitches per inch, mm -hmm. but it also gives you that extra number, which is stitches per minute. Where mm -hmm. do you like it? Now understand everybody's different, right? Everyone's That's why we get to choose more than one, but tell us where you like yours at when you're free motion quilting. I like to keep mine around 200 to 300. Okay. It's generally the speed that I like to keep okay. mine at. Good. And the one reason why I want to say that, um, as far as the cruise is concerned, is because you're in the back of the machine. This this Amara has a quilt from the back kit, so you're at the back of the machine. You're not seeing what's going on in the front. When you're using pantographs. When you're using pantographs. Mm -hmm. So as you're stitching along, when you come to those points, if you pause just ever so briefly, it will set that stitch down in that point and make a nice sharp point for you. Yes. Otherwise, if you go back to precision, where precision has a P, and it means it pauses, sometimes if you stop, the machine stops, and then when you start back up, you're not going to get a point, you're going to get a rounded right. point there, or rounded. So I, I guess I kind of like to include with when I tell people about cruise that when you're, when you're moving your hands at a comfortable speed, mm -hmm. you want your cruise set at a speed that when you pause at a point, it'll just take one stitch mm -hmm. or two stitches and then you can leave that point. One is my preference. So if you've set it at 500, it's probably going to take like five stitches there, which is too fast for most people. Right. So like you, you want to slow it down and find that perfect speed for you. Mm -hmm. Exactly so. right. The other mode that you can also have on your machine is what we call the manual mode, M. And in manual mode, you're the stitch regulator. So the faster you stitch, if you have manual mode set low, like at 500, yeah. my stitches are huge yeah. because I'm a fast stitcher. And so you don't want to slow down your movement. If that's the speed, if you've mastered a certain movement, then you want the machine to do the work and you want to speed the machine up if so you start getting these long matching the stitches. machine to you, right? Exactly right. Yeah. And you can easily do that at the machine by pressing the plus button as you're moving it. Yeah, it does change while it, you're stitching, doesn't it? While you're it? stitching, and then you can find your perfect stitch speed for you. And you can easily change that by just pressing one of the little icons, and it will permanently re keep that in the uh, mode for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So one, one little caution. Don't want to keep your thumb on that plus button while no. you're stitching, or you might inadvertently increase that stitch stitches per inch, right. and not meaning to. So Because I've seen people in class do that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so, you know, as you're stitching along, what you will notice is the stitches start getting smaller and smaller to match your movement, and then all of a sudden you'll say, ah, that's it. Yeah. So take your thumb off of it. Yeah, so, perfect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good. So on the back here, we do have a pantograph, and if I was going to be doing a pantograph, I would be in regulated, and I would be in the cruise mode. The other thing I would do is I would have one of our glide feet on here. Now the reason why I would do that is because, again, I'm back here. I don't see what's going on in the front. So if, my, if I have a weak seam or a loose seam here, yeah. that hopping foot would likely go right underneath of it. This hopping foot will glide right over the top of it. They named so. that foot well, didn't they? They did. It just glides they did. over everything. And they are fabulous. So. Yeah. And the good news is for all the new Moxie owners, the feet that fit the Amara or the Forte and the Infinity also fit your Moxie. Yeah. So, so how does a pantograph help your free motion skills? 
Okay, so again, you're going to be building that muscle memory before you even start to quilt a pantograph. What I would recommend is to sit and stand back by your machine and practice drawing it. Now this design here, you can see that there are arrows on this pantograph. Not all pantographs will have arrows on it. So when I first started quilting, because I did not have a pro stitcher at that time, mm -hmm. I actually had a plastic sheet uh, uh, that I laid over my pantographs. So I could sit here and I could practice drawing my pantograph and how it was going to move or how I was going to move the machine exactly around this pantograph, just like this. So just by tracing it with your finger, mm -hmm. it helps you learn the path. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. I, I like that. And with the plastic sheet over it, if I had to stop or pause for any reason, maybe the phone rang the doorbell, I was expecting a package, I'd always try to get to a point here, and that's where I'd like to start because it's so much easier to start on a point than on a curve. And so I would stop there. Now, if this did not have arrows, like some of them, I actually would use real quick a pin and draw an arrow pointing the direction oh, that I would start up again. That would be helpful. When yeah. I would start going around it again. So again, that practice that muscle memory of drawing it. Now, another thing that I did is I did take a piece of preview paper and I laid it over my design and I drew this design onto a piece of preview paper, just like this. That actually gave me the feeling with using the marker. But another reason why I did this was because I could store this right inside of my pantograph. So then when I wanted to audition a design on the quilt top, I could automatically take it out and say, what about this pantograph? That's for this design. Dual for this purpose quilt. for so this. So it serves a dual purpose. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. What a great idea. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about some of the feet because I know you change your feet when you're doing some free motion. So let's come over here. Okay. I do. I love to change the feet on my machine. So I do. I love to change the feet to match my quilting that I'm going to be doing for that day. So for example, if I was going to be doing a lot of free motion, there are two feet that I might choose. Number one is the open toe foot. The reason why I like the open toe foot most, as opposed to the closed toe, is because it actually allows me to see. Yeah, you can see right where mm -hmm. you're placing your stitches, can't you? Exactly right. So that is why I like to use the open toe foot when it comes time to doing a lot of free motion quilting because it allows me to see what I'm quilting. The other toe, or the other foot that I like to use, <laughs> not toe, the other foot that I like to use is what we call the micro quilter. But I kind love. of looks like it's missing something. It does. If you take a look at these two, oh my gosh, look at what it's missing. But the purpose is for you to have clear view of the needle. You can see the needle and what you're stitching at all times. This just kind of holds the fabric down and holds it in place as you're quilting along. So you along. can't stitch without a foot because the foot has a purpose of holding, you know, the fabric still, basically, mm -hmm. and then the needle can do its job. So the micro quilting foot is so fun to use when you're doing micro quilting. It you is. You can stitch in any direction. Mm -hmm. It is. It is actually. Yeah. I wish I would have had it when I was doing that one. I hear you. <laughs> Yes. So those are two of the feet that I like to use the most, except for when I am doing some fun little quilting, which would require me to have my ruler foot on there. And I like to use this every time I use, I'm working with rulers because you can actually see the difference in the height here. So it gives you that added bonus when you're working with any rulers. Yeah. It's so. kind of, we call it our insurance policy, the oh, sure foot. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. When I first started teaching, and we didn't have these, but we did have the echo feet, I would put the smallest echo foot. Oh, would you? That's on a the good main, idea. On the long arm. So that way it gave them a little bit further space away from that. Yeah, it's pretty scary if you hit a ruler. It so. is, it is. Okay, well I saw that you had some fun, another couple of other quilts that had some fun ideas on them. Yes. Do we want those over to show about the other feet? Well, 
Can Are I talk about one more thing about oh, this Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, I okay. interrupted you. No, 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 you're good. So we talked about how the echo feet work great for echoing around a previous design, like when and I did a, the and rulers. And a template, yeah. Yes, exactly. But another reason why I like the echo feet is because of the fact that, oddly enough, you can use this to kind of start shrinking down your design idea. So if you want to create a stipple going all the way across a quilt, okay, and you want it to remain kind of consistent, what you could do is you could put an echo foot on. And then as you are quilting around, when one of these edges start to hit up against the previous stitch line, you right. bounce away from it. So it allows you to make a light, like more spacious stipple because mm -hmm. you don't want mm -hmm. that foot to cross your last line. Exactly right. Okay, I haven't used it that way, but that's a great idea. So I had a customer that wanted just this giant stipple all across her quilt, and I said, well, you don't want it to get too giant. Yeah. And so I put this echo foot on my machine, and I did some um, stippling with this foot. She goes, oh, that's the perfect size. And what makes it so great is that you can stop and then the next day you can start back up and always when there's that start up the next day it's like you start up and you don't quite start up with the same consistency. You kind of need a little warm up yeah, time. Yeah, you huh? need a warm up time. <laughs> this doesn't this allows you to automatically have that warm up time built in. Nice so, visual. Yeah. Yes. I like that. Okay. So this is another foot that I adore and I use it a lot. This is what is called the couching foot. I this was originally foot. made for my granddaughter. It. And it was just for tummy time. I had made a lot of quilts for her and given the, my son and daughter-in-law the quilts. And so I all of a sudden thought, oh my gosh, I don't have anything from my house that would be just for her when uh, yeah. she's over. And so I was thinking, okay, she's due any day now. So what I did is I took some flannel, loaded the flannel. Some fun flannel. Mm -hmm, on the back, and then put a layer of cotton batting in it, and then put another layer of flannel on the top, and put my couching foot on. And I just did all kinds of fun couching with it. And I have an instant quilt took maybe two hours at the max. So some free motion, mm -hmm. a couching foot, and some yarn, and mm -hmm. you have a fantastic quilt for your grandbaby. Exactly. Exactly right. And they love the texture. Babies oh, love texture. Babies. So, yeah. yeah. Constantly awesome. doing this. Yeah, I'll take it. Constantly doing that. So couching is fun as well. And uh, I the couching foot that I used was this large one right here. Okay. And then this yarn. So this was that the chenille yarn. yarn. The chenille yarn. Yeah. And oh, is it beautiful when it comes to be quilted. So fun. And yes. th it's really a nice yarn to couch with because mm -hmm. it has an even um, dimension. Like it, it's constant. It has a constant mm -hmm. thickness throughout it so it doesn't get caught. Exactly in your right. Foot. So exactly that chenille yarn right. is perfect. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. Awesome. So, okay. Well, I think you've inspired me with your free motion. Oh, but quilting. I'm not done. You have more. <laughs> I have more. Show me. Okay. All right. So we often talk about how some people find it really hard to get into free motion, but they, they say, oh, you know what? I've got loops. I've done loops. I love loops. I can get loops done. And I said, well, just change it up a little bit. And they look at me and think, well, how do I do that? Well, guess what? I've got some ideas for you. So for example, I have some of our trustworthy little, or tr have some trustworthy little cookie cutters. Cookie cutters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I have a sponge right here, and I am going to. So your sponge is a little wet. My sponge is very okay. damp. Mm -hmm. I'm putting my cookie cutter in here. Okay. And getting it nice and wet. And then I'm dropping it just in some chalk powder, just like this. And then I can place random designs on there. Perfect. And then I can take, and since you know how to do loops, come in, do a loop, come right here, trace around that heart. And it doesn't have to be perfect because that chalk powder is going to disappear. Yes, right. And then you can come back out, 
do some more loops, come right here, and then you can trace around that heart again. So you're just using a travel design mm -hmm. to get to your different motifs. Mm -hmm. What a fun way to help exactly right. have a visual on spacing out your motifs. Right, exactly. Yeah. But you can also do that by just taking like some foam. That's like this, it's just like craft foam. Oh yeah. Okay. Taking one of these little brushes. It, well, it normally is black, but you know. And not just- Not when it's covered with white chalk. Not when it's covered <laughs> with white chalk. And you can just chalk around that foam piece just like that, and there's your design. Oh my goodness. And then you can stitch right inside this design, come around here like this, maybe loop in and do a little circle in, circle right back out, and then come and start all over again. What an awesome skill building idea. I love it. Thank you. Very nice. You have another quilt over there as well. Oh, okay. So this is built upon that little piece. When I would take this to teach with, or when I would take this to go to classes, uh -huh. um, I would say, okay, if all you can do is stipple, look at how fun a stipple is using the couching foot. Okay? You can just do a stipple. Now that you can accomplish that stipple, what if you elongated it a little bit and you did this one? It's an elongated stipple. Kind of looks more like water. Exactly. Or mm -hmm. Something. Exactly. And different. then last but not least is the swirl that you can do. And the one thing I do want to make a comment about is um, I did this on purpose. Well, I didn't break the thread on purpose. The thread broke on purpose for me. Okay. Um, but what I did is instead of Instead of cutting, when I started it back up, it's so easy to restart with couching. You just snip the, the bottom thread, rethread your machine, rethread the, th uh, the yarn through your foot, and then just back it up. Now, I had a little bit of pink left over when this, my thread broke. So rather than, if, if I wouldn't have had, I probably would have found another pink section and started it up right uh -huh. there. So, but rather than cut this off, I left it for people to see that this is what you would do. You'd back it up just a little bit, do your tacking stitch, and then start Easy back up Easy to start again. again. Mm -hmm. Easy to start again. It's not where you feel like you have to tear everything out. And you don't even really see the quilting on the back. No. It just fades. So great. Vicki, thank you so much for coming. But before we go, uh -huh. I want you to just, because now we've got this quilt behind us, I'd like you to just kind of stand by it and tell us a little bit about the, the choices you made, the swirls, how you put the, the background, like the checkerboard fill next to it, mm -hmm. just why you would, went with some of those choices and how they, and this looks like another of the Zentangle twists. It is, uh-huh, only this was, these are with half square triangles. This is actually, if you were to start up here, these are half square triangles right here. So I did the same De design idea, motif in a triangle. Uh -huh. And then, so this was one half square triangle, and then this was another one coming all the way down. That's nothing but half square triangles. Again, when I found this pattern, it was out of a book, and I can't remember the name of the book right away, but it was based upon solids and quilts made out of solid fabrics. And I loved this because there was so much negative space that I knew that again, I can make a quilt, I can make this, I can quilt this and take it for many different classes. So I started out and in this area, it screamed a feather of some so uh -huh. sort. So I put a feather in here. There are feathers in these triangles as well. Um, around this feather, I did pebbling after I did some echo. In this, around these triangles, I did a scribble, which a scribble is just where you're laying thread down. You don't uh -huh. care how much it intertwines. And so in these areas, I just love this checkerboard design. I, I have seen that on many quilts and just fell in love with it. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to put there. Well, by putting this really dense quilting around your feather, it just allows that feather to mm -hmm. pop out a little more in it both does. cases. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I want to point out how just kind of your curvy against your straight line just is so pleasing to the eye. Mm -hmm. It just really makes a nice really, combination. Yes. So I really want, just wanted to mix and match it. Yeah. But then when I came down to this area, it was kind of like, okay, what am I going to do down here? But if you take a look, what you will notice is this area right in here matches exactly 
this area I right just here. see it now so there's that feather area there and so there's I placed feather. it right here and so, I can see the star mm -hmm, with the feathers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love it everything is just flipped Vicki, thank you so much for joining us today. I am sure that you've inspired our quilters at home to, mm -hmm. to, to keep going with their free motion skills and just practice. If we've learned anything yes. today, that practice, practice drawing mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. what it takes to become proficient in your ski. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if we've learned anything today, we've learned that practice drawing um, just repeatedly drawing mm -hmm. those th those designs over and over again is what's going to help us to be proficient and be successful at our free motion skills. So, so thanks for joining us at our HQ Live. Please join us again next month, and um, subscribe to our YouTube channel, our YouTube channel, and give us a like. Yes, right? absolutely. So, thank you so much for being here, and have a great day. Have some fun quilting this month. Mm -hmm. okay.